Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about failing an interview. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, I felt I was a pretty good software engineer with a successful career, but I did quite poorly in my Google interview. Does this mean I'm not as, not as good an engineer as I thought? Well, obviously, that would probably be the meaning. Well, it depends on how you define it. Uh, I mean, you can, of course, shock this down as you being just a... Well, you could say that you had a bad day. But if you did poorly in your interview, or if you didn't understand the technical uh, questions, or I don't know what went wrong for you, uh, I think that you should think about two different perspectives. So one thing is that whenever you're in a hiring process, it's just like a test, like a test in school, which is an interesting thing if you think about it, because uh, if you fail a major exam in school, then you are labeled for the rest of your life, most of the time, as someone who failed that class. Even if the week after failing, you actually read the books again, and now realize why you were wrong on the test. You don't get a second try many times. I'm very sorry to say. And that is a very unfair way uh, of, well, it's an unfair thing. It's extremely unfair. And it's the same thing with job interviews. You very, like, sometimes you can retake things, you can redo things, but many times if you make a mistake, you have a bad day or whatever, it's kind of it and you have to move on to the next thing. Uh, or you might be contacted or you might have an opportunity at a later stage. It, I don't know what hiring processes or hiring policies Google's ha Google has, but I can imagine that that is the case. So I think that what's interesting is that if, if you, you seem to believe that you are a worse engineer than what you thought you were just because you failed an interview. But and as I said, like of course that is going to have to be true. Like you, if you really think about it, the if you can't pass their interviewing process, well, then there are clearly things that you don't know. But here's the kicker: why would you know all the th possible things that they could possibly ask you about? You have no idea what they're. Like, I mean, sure there are books and there are people posting things about if, because this is specifically Google but let's t talk about any literally any company if you they can give you literally any type of challenge and it might be something where you have a weakness you might be good at a thousand different things and just because they tested you on one specific thing that you're not so strong in that's it if they gave you another type of test or they should, if anything had changed about that situation you might have been just been fine but you weren't because the test was about something that you're not all that good at and in now specifically Google well, some of the things that they usually favor are computer science related questions things that are fairly acad academic in many ways and there have been many uh, blogs and articles and the complaints or whatever uh, related to the fact that even senior very experienced developers can't get through that interview because that is how tough it is in many cases and we can discuss if we if you, I, I don't want to discuss it because I don't care but the you can absolutely discuss whether or not it matters to you if you know how to I don't know implement a a graph search algorithm when you're never ever most likely going to do that is it relevant? Well, for some people it is, and for some people it's not. In your everyday life, it doesn't really matter at all, depending on what you, I mean, what you do as a software developer. Most of the time, you're never going to do anything like that. But this is the way that Google might test you, or like a company might test you. And I've seen this guys happen many, many times before. I've seen people uh, pull out very hardcore computer science questions for people who are going to do front-end development. They're never going to do this. Like it's, it's completely irrelevant. I had at one point I had a I had a logic test, and it had it had nothing to do with software development whatsoever. It was like a sequence of dots moving on a board. 
and my job was to pick the next most like logical sequence that's what I was supposed to do and these testing processes guys they, they are basically voodoo that is what they are uh, some of it is going to be accurate and quite and some of it in some cases it's going to be like the most bullshit thing that you can possibly imagine that has almost no relevancy but the thing is if you fail these sorts of interviews or if you fail the Google interview and so forth I'm not nobody's saying that you don't know how to write software what is being said is that you failed this exercise and that is an interesting observation I think that is something that you should take with you it's something that you should really think about if you couldn't solve that problem why why couldn't you solve that problem is it because you have holes in your knowledge or is it because uh, you in many cases you couldn't really think about the problem correctly and if you had someone kind of show you how it worked would you understand the solution I think that you should take a look at that I should uh, I, I would do that I would have a look at the exercise and try to find someone who can explain to me how it's supposed to work and see what falls out what, what's the outcome of that because it might be the case that you uh, you have gaps in your knowledge but it could also be the case that this was a very tricky problem and you couldn't really think about it in a good way and if improving in this area is important to you well then maybe more of these sorts of exercises are going to be good for you and I don't know if Google gives you a second chance at some later stage and you take a look at this part and uh, of your own education and you get better at it maybe that time you're going to pass the bar who knows so what I want you to take away from this is that well if you fail the Google interview and you think that you're a good software developer I don't think that you should I mean don't kill yourself over this thing guys there are you're gonna fail interviews even master programmers are going to fail interviews depending on who is doing the interview and that is kind of the thing it, you might be a really good software developer but the tests that you get at any company it doesn't have to be Google might just not be on something that you are all that good with and that's the thing that they're gonna judge you on and it is unfair I'm very sorry to say but it could have been like if this test was even the slightest bit different you would have just aced it or maybe not who knows but this is the test and so by failing clearly you have shown to yourself that there are things that you could get better at and I think that you should take a look at the test that you took and try to figure out okay where we did I go wrong try to learn from this and then try it again like educate yourself learn from it and then contact Google again and ask is it possible for me to retake the test or whatever and then continue your, uh, continue your process because one thing is very certain and that is that there's always more to learn you can be a really good software developer but I'm pro um, I promise you, you're never going to learn all of it. So the only thing you should, uh, the only thing to do here, in my opinion, at the very least, is to learn from this, try to further your education, and try again. Have a great day.